la la la. <laughs> it's a musical. <laughs> it's a musical kind of day to day here at Meet the Biz. And we've got somebody special who you all know. Um, uh, he is a composer, a a, a producer, a director, a, a teacher, an actor. You know who he is, Alexander Tovar. <laughs> Hello, my dear friend. Hello, David. Thank you for having me on here. And thank you oh. for the nice build up. That's very sweet. Well, I mean, my God, this work that you do. I mean, I'm first of all, I am so blessed to be working for Performing Arts Studio West and to have you to work with. I mean, it's, oh. you know. Well, I, it's, it's both ways. I'm blessed to work with you and everybody at the studio. And no, it's, it's a blessing for me as well. So, but thank you for saying that. Yeah, no, I've been having a wonderful time going on almost two years there with you guys. Two years? Yeah, in June, yeah. I know. I still feel like I'm getting to know people and, you know, getting to know the ropes there and if people still like me there, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> people still like you. Like you. They love you. Oh, well, that's sweet. But They do. Oh my God. And, okay, the official announcement today, you've been hearing it over the past couple of weeks, but our wonderful Meet the Biz theme song has been composed by you yes thank you for asking me oh well it was fun thank you for asking me to do that i i thought for a while you know just you got you need a theme for this thing and i not not in the way of like you know okay ask me um i just thought like you know there should be a theme just like john and i were talking the performing arts studio west should have a theme too so that's something in the future but yeah it's such a great um Thank you for asking me to do it. It was very fun. It was oh my God. And it's so, what's so good, what's so good, so what's so brilliant about what you do and what makes a good composer is to have those levels to it. And even with this short, amazing, wonderful, fun theme, it, it has the levels of fun in it, yet it also yeah. has the depth that is needed that goes with Meet the Biz. Well, yeah, I, yeah, that's what I was trying. So, th yeah, I was hoping that you would you would be happy with it. That's oh. when I write music for other people. Is if they're happy, then I'm happy. You know, right. when it's for myself, it's I'm harder on myself. You know, yeah. it's hard to know what's what's happy, what makes us happy, and we'll, you know, we're oftentimes our hardest critic. And I, yeah. definitely, all of us. Yeah, I mean, I spend most of the day kicking my ass. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm trying to mostly kick my yeah, ass. I really, <laughs> um, I mean, emotionally and psychologically, yeah. But we don't have to go into my therapy. Whatever, whatever. That's you okay. Want. I go into my therapy every time I come on to meet the biz. <laughs> well, that's good. Sort of. Well, it's good. And you said something I I didn't. Uh, I still I just yeah told somebody this yesterday. It was very sweet. And when we first started doing these classes, you were like, you know watching you do these because uh, you know we're all kind of this is all new for all of us but it was very sweet that you were like um seeing you do your classes it's really great because you you love the content so much so we see how much you love it and that thank you for saying that that made me feel much more at ease and and a little bit more oh okay like it, it, david it, it was just a sweet thing he's like you were just like we can see that you like talking about these things and that makes the audience or that makes me interested in and in, because you're so engaged in like it so that that was a that was a very nice compliment and something that I'm still I still you know I don't know if I, if I feel like I'm not talking about something interesting it's just like well I like it and then David said that people can see that I like it and then they'll they'll in turn like it so I don't know it maybe well it shows how much you enjoy what you're doing and <laughs> and it comes across and it makes us it, it's something that you know not just students will get up every morning and watch, but it's like, let's turn on the Alexander Tovar show. <laughs> because it's so, it's like, it's like a mini documentary every day. Yeah. And it yeah, has, yeah. yeah. 
No, no, I'm learning a ton too. It's, it's stuff that I've always been interested in that I know a little bit about of that. And then I dive deeper into like, why do I like, and, and it makes me ask the question, do I like these things? Why, why do I, and, and I'm learning so much, you know, in the process of it. So it, if they're learning and I'm learning, you know, it's a nice way to share, the, right. you know, my mom said, you know, cause I'm, and she's been a teacher all of her life and an educator and, and she's given me a lot of pointers and a lot of advice. And, and I'm like, well, I, you know, when I get insecure and ask her stuff, she's just like, well, you know, sharing is, is um, teaching is many times teaching is sharing and when, you know, so that's part of teaching is, is also sharing, not necessarily, lecturing and telling you what to do or what to think but sharing your your thoughts with students or with anybody is, is a form of teaching so right yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah I, I i i've noticed that even more doing these because i'm just being myself and sh like you said sharing what i like um now you you compose, you direct, you edit, you act. If if I had to say, well, choose one, what would you say? Oh, um, compose. Like I, I, I'm a composer at heart. I, I was, when I was a little kid, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. How little? Um, you know, probably, um, probably eight or nine maybe i had heard a lot of music in the house because my parents played a lot of music all the time so i remember very vivid memories of uh even before i could talk of just of our our beautiful house and the music that would be going on in the house and um taking it all in and knowing that well i didn't know that music was so a part of me but i i just I, you know, as a kid and as four or five and six, I have memories of listening to beautiful, wonderful music in the house. And just, it was just part of my language, even before I knew the language, it was part of my emotional language or, or something that these, these, this music, this classical music, this jazz music, or this musical music is something was so a part of my DNA and blood that it, it was, yeah, it was almost like before I could I could speak or something. It, it was in, ingrained in me. And um, I think when I had music lessons, probably around, which my dad taught me around, around 10, then I started, when I learned how to read and write music at an elementary level, then I, I wanted to um, be, I, and then I started reading books about composers in elementary school, about Mozart, about Tchaikovsky, and just learning about their, and I, I was just drawn into being a composer at a really young age for some reason. Um, it, nobody told me to. Um, my parents just, all they did was just share wonderful, play wonderful music in the house. Right. And um, do, you, do you remember, like, I remember the first movie I ever went to in a theater, which was Walt Disney's Peter Pan. Oh, really? Oh, Gee. that's a great one. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, yeah. you can fly, you can fly. And that's yeah. why I feel like I'm still a kid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember the first piece that hit you or yeah, do you remember the first piece that you went oh. oh yeah. I mean oh man, I should um first piece. Um she uh I'm It'll come. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was, um, um, well, but probably the first piece was, my dad would play a lot of his music, his original music in the house oh, when, wow. um, on the piano. So I do remember probably um, hearing a lot of his music on the piano and really loving it and i knew that it was daddy's music and it it so it would resonate throughout our house his songs which were um these wonderful beautiful kind of um um kind of like 
not show tunes and not Burt Backrack, but you know, melodic songs that were jazz classical like that was probably my earliest memory of hearing music that I really that I loved and I didn't really know why there are a few songs that he wrote that really stayed with me my whole life that and that was kind of the first time I that that music affected me so much because I do remember being in the other room with him playing and maybe I was playing with my toys and I do kind of remember putting the toys down and thinking, I love this song. I love this song that daddy's playing right now. I, it's, it's beautiful. I, it's, and he plays this all the time and it's, and then I would go back to kind of playing my toys. So every now and then I would kind of look up and, and just hear the piano playing in the next room and, and being um, really, really happy and full of joy. So perhaps the, the earliest was, my my dad's original music i never really thought about that um wow and then from from there it would probably be my mom would play the piano and she would play pieces like tchaikovsky pieces scott joplin or chopin or she would play the piano so um a really hearing the music around the house from my parents playing was probably my earliest like musical impressions like and then, of course, the radio and CD players. But I, I don't know. I would think that the first piece was one or two pieces in my mind I can think of right now that my dad wrote. Probably those were the first pieces. Um, that makes and, it, I mean, to hear that, I mean, makes me well up because it's our dads and moms are so important Yeah. Uh, in many different ways. And to have your first piece of music come from your father is like... yeah. Yeah, wow. an original piece, uh, something that he had written, you know, like his own composition was just, I didn't realize till later how important that was, because I just, I knew he wrote it, but you know, you just, when you're small, you just think, well, it must be easy to write a, a song or whatever, and um, yeah. yeah. Are his, uh, uh, can you hear his pieces online? Oh, yeah, um, I, yeah, we should include his website below after this or i i will yes um yeah he wrote an amazing um uh musical slash opera that's uh that is kind of his life's work that um it's called much ado about rosie and it's kind of about much ado about nothing but it's it's got it's shakespeare but it's kind of set in um an urban kind of uh there's it's kind of mariachi it's musical theater it's got all these blends of music so we worked on that about 10 years ago and yes um he'll be very um uh, very surprised and shy that we're talking about this <laughs> i very, love it yes he's a very um introverted person i mean he's full of uh, charisma and and personality but that's that's all kind of a facade. <laughs> you know what? I just, yeah. I just have this idea that when we get out of quarantine, maybe he could come in and and you talking to him oh about God, that. You and, and him John on the stage. Too. Yeah, that would be fun. I've told John about that too, and I've told my dad about it. And, and I think he's flattered, but I think he's a little bit he's he's a little shy about these things. But come on, I know. I know. <laughs> We can get him out of the shell. Don't worry. There we go. I know he 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 loves it. It's, I I think he's just uh, he doesn't like things being about him, and I get that too. Yeah. But uh, there's, you know, sometimes you have to, you have to put yourself out there to get. But he's he's just a little shy. But yeah, his influence was tremendous. Um, both, both of my parents. But yeah, it was funny because um, he taught me trumpet. He taught me piano right around age nine or ten. And, but it was more just like, you know, you're going to have music lessons, just, you know, the same with my sister and brother. It wasn't, there wasn't any pressure in the sense of you're going to be a composer, you're going to be a trumpet player. So people do ask, and that's a, that's a good question. You know, was there competition? Was there pressure? For some reason I was lucky. My, my dad didn't put any, or my mom, they never put any pressure to say, this is what you're going to do. This is just part of your education. You're going to learn how to read and write, and then you're going to learn how to read music. And um, for some reason that just, I was, it stuck with me where I was like, okay, I want to be, and I remember at 10 or 11 thinking, okay, I want to be a musical genius. I want to be a prodigy. I want to be, and that's when I saw the movie Amadeus and I was like, I want to be like him. I want to be, yeah. I want to be brilliant in life. I want to be, um, yeah, I want to be a little genius. I don't know where that idea came from. It's, 
very annoying, but it's no, it's not. It's like it's <laughs> it has it. You have this mix of qualities about you. You're so loving and sincere, yet you have this amazing drive and focus. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I, I have been. I've I've had seer, severe discipline, and I don't know where that came from. It was just yeah. I mean, I was. Um, you know, I didn't like going to school, but I was never unpopular. I was never, yeah, I just have always been very dedicated and focused because, and I like having fun, but it, 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 um, I always had this sense of there's a lot of work to get done here yeah. and not, and there's just, I don't want to waste time. And, and again, that wasn't my parents telling me, being strict upon me. They were, they were, you know, they let me do whatever I want for the most part. Like, so it was self-discipline. I don't know where I got that from. I think it was knowing, it was probably seeing composers, seeing the movie Amadeus, seeing a few other things and saying, oh, that's how you succeed. You work hard. You have to be, in order to be serious, to be taken seriously, you have to work hard. And so I think I must have told myself that at an early age. And I think I felt very lonely as a kid, um, just because I had severe anxiety and depression. And I didn't know, I didn't know that. And my parents didn't know that. So we just didn't. So I think because of that, I did use music as a, um, as, as a way to escape and to self-medicate because I did feel extremely lonely. And it's not really, it's not anybody's fault, but I would with, withdraw. And I felt, I felt, uh, you know, on the, um, outside I felt a feeling of uh, and I, that's always that's actually never gone away of just and I think all artists can relate to that but a, a feeling of not feeling comfortable in the world not, uh, not understanding it and and perhaps art is the only way to to make us feel better whether it's our own art or you know turning on the radio or watching a movie and getting lost in that it's it's a way to make some sense of this chaotic world or something. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. I, okay. so I kind of withdrew into focusing on trying to learn as much as I could about music and about writing music and about writing an opera. And I wrote an opera for my dad when, when I was young and, and for his birthday and, you know, it was terrible, but it was. Oh, no. Yeah. But that's what you say. It was terrible. I bet it was, Brilliant. No, no, no. It, it was a nice little gift. I think I was yeah. probably trying to kiss ass or something. Uh, well, I, I just, I have to go back to, you say, self-medicate with, with your music. And, and, you know, we all have, some people have to take medication. Some people, have, you know, yeah. this, that, or the other. But it's so amazing when you can find that the medication to help you heal or help you see uh the joy in life is through art yes yeah yeah i mean don't you feel that way too I oh mean, yeah yeah i mean uh, and i've mentioned this before i mean i love oh, i'm a people person and i love to connect and maybe that's why i i love to to act because i can mm -hmm. have that connection i mean i remember um sophomore year in high school I did uh bells are ringing and I mm -hmm. played Dr. Kitchell the dentist mm. and it, there's only two scenes but I in the in the play and I sang one song uh, I love your sunny teeth anyway <laughs> I'm gonna have to find that take because I still have the cassette tape I would on. love that um but I remember the first time we did it and I was the nerdy little guy in high school didn't have didn't feel like I had much friends, many friends. I went home during lunch and had lunch there because I was so close and watched the edge of night and then I would go back to school. But I was on that stage the first time and I got a applause and standing ovation and I was like smitten, you know? I'm in love with acting. <laughs> oh, that's great. So it was something like that. And then I, I realized too, as years went on about what is it about the applause? Is it the applause mm -hmm. I love? Is it the, you know, and I'm still, you know, as, as you grow and learn and live and love, <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you still, you still find, um, 
you still find your your journey. You still go on your journey, and things yeah. change, but some some things still remain the same. But you used and no buts, and you used your music in several of your films. I mean, you what you directed and produced and composed these films. Yeah, I mean, and wrote them. And wrote them. Yeah, I know. I know. I yeah, and I did that for a vehicle for my music. I really. Um, I was submitting my music everywhere. And after college, I, I got some gigs here and there, but nothing. And I always was a huge fan of movies. I love, you know, I just got, I fell in love with movies really at a young age. And, and I think I, um, and so in my mid twenties or so, I, I thought it would be fun to make a movie and use my music and all over the movie and use it as a, as part of a character, part of the script or something. Um, and, I was around a lot of people that wanted to do movies because I worked in restaurants and everyone was an actor and everybody. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to actually go out and do it. I have nothing to lose. I'm a composer. So I can always fall back on if this completely fails. Um, I think I have, I'm kind of funny. Maybe I could sit down and write some jokes or write some, again, it was, it was very just. Um, well, you could see the influence too that Woody Allen had upon you. Oh yeah, I mean he was yeah he's my favorite. He's he's just he's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. I mean he's really what one of the yeah I mean I could I could go into that and he was such an influence when I was twelve thirteen of uh, on me and and I loved his movies and so I I did use his his movie Manhattan from nineteen seventy nine. I did use that as a template for the first script that I wrote. I wanted to flip the the storyline, and so I wanted to make the movie about a young artist in love with an older woman instead of you know his of you know he's in love with a younger woman. So I, I used that's kind of how I learned how to write write a script. I used kind of page by page what he had done, and then I I flipped and reversed it, and then I added my own jokes to it, and and that's kind of how I I, I taught myself the structure of a screenplay by kind of not copying but a little bit. Um, and then twisting it, flipping it, making it my own, putting in new jokes, and um, really just as a as a way to feature my music. Though I really and and both movies are drenched with all music, all my music, and so that's why I kind of say I'm a composer first because um, I, I feel like that's what I'm best at, and yeah. Well, it's so it shows in your films. You know what? Nothing in Los Angeles. Yeah, and show, show business. business. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it shows when I watch these movies, you know, you start watching it, it's like you can't, it's not one of those movies that you pause and say, I'm going to get a drink or this or that. You uh, just yeah. sit and, and enjoy it. Oh, uh, thank um, you. And and they're both on Amazon right now, right? Yes. Yes. Amazon um, Prime. So you can watch them on Prime. Prime. And so yeah. what is so good about your work, too, it shows that you're composing. If the, your script structure or the this it just flows the script the 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 story flows, the writing flows the acting it just all goes together. Oh, and thank you for it, saying it sees that. That it stems from your music because it has a sort of a musical flair mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah, and I think a comedy. There's so much rhythm in comedy, and so there's so being a kind of comedic writer and being a. a um, I don't want to say comedic composer, although my, my music has a lot of humor in it and, and, and it's not because I, I want to be funny, but there, it's just naturally has a lot of humor in it. So maybe there are some juxtapositions with writing comedy and writing music and, and having a pace, a rhythmic pace that's, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. And also knowing that I could edit the films right. and had complete kind of, um, but Rob Herring directed co-directed the first one with me and so he was and he was uh, a really good buddy uh and he really was very instrumental in helping me complete that film so as were a lot of other people so although i did those roles there i couldn't have done it without rob without danny without uh, people i can give you their names later but uh, okay. oh, i couldn't yeah. have done it a lot so this was um a group effort for sure it, it was just kind of spearheaded in the initially by me just because i don't know i was really scared but again i i think because i had faith in my music i thought 
if this fails, if this doesn't work, that's um, that's okay. But I'm glad I'm glad I did it. It changed my life in in many ways. Doing both of those movies, and I would love to do more. If there's you know, a, it, and there's scripts. I have tons of scripts and tons of ideas, and um, and I write scripts as I'm writing the music to the script. And so I'll take a break and write the music, and then take a break and then go back and work on character development or whatever. So I, I don't know if any of it is good or if it makes sense, but I'm trying. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> but Alyssa, I mean, uh, and what you're doing online with these workshops oh. uh, are amazing. I mean, each, like I said, each day is a documentary short. It's, I mean, West Side Story. I love that. Oh my God, oh, one of the best musicals ever. Oh, my favorite, uh, yeah. Stravinsky, the, the Woody Allen films. Uh, uh, and of uh -huh. course, Miles Davis. Yeah. Which I thought was so interesting that that came out right after or I yeah. interviewed. Mine wasn't out yet, the interview with Donnie Demers. And he mentions that. I. Right away, I thought of you. It was like that's so. I know it was within a day or something where they both came out together or something. Yeah, that it's was interesting super cool. how people, the universe is connected, kind of thing. You know, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I loved that. Um, I, I don't. Did I ever tell you I used to collect soundtracks? No, no, no. I used to collect. I just brought four here that I had to show you. Mm -hmm. Because I thought I could, you know, it's like the sharing game. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting, out of all the soundtracks I had, I think I have over 500 soundtrack albums. Wow. And albums. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't, and I framed six of them, and I've got four of them here, and I just realized that three of them are the same composer. So it's quite interesting. This is my favorite soundtrack of all time. Body Heat? Body Heat. Yeah, you told me about it. I need to watch it and I need to hear it. I don't, I don't, I've never seen it and I've never heard it, but I love John Barry. Talk about levels. Yeah. yeah. John, John Barry was my favorite, I have to say. Oh, great composer. He was great. That's oh, beautiful. Isn't it great? And yeah. this is like, this was hard to get in there. It is. Oh, wow. It's, oh, that's know. so cool. Do you have a record player? I do. It's not hooked up, though. Oh, okay. I just got it out of my 60 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to go back. I remembered uh, you were talking about the levels, uh, the different, you know, the comedy in your music. But I remember also before you were saying you, when you were younger, you went through a little depression. Mm, more, yeah. More than a little. So yeah. what I think your work comes in, you know, sometimes we think certain things are bad thing like depression or that but you can use all all of you the comedy the depression the the joy and that's what you do in your music that's what yeah. that makes yeah. the levels oh probably yeah I, I haven't yeah i think you're right i haven't analyzed well maybe i have but i mean i don't when i write music i really kind of just sit down and, and um um it comes out. It's almost like uh, rem I, re I try to remember something I, I've heard before. It's it's almost like recalling a memory and um, and it's like, uh, oh, wait, yeah, okay, that, not that I've heard it before, but it, it, it kind of comes like that instead of... A feeling? Yeah, yeah, it's a feeling and it's very intuitive and it's, um, I, that's why I think I write really quickly, for better or worse, but I just, I, I don't dwell and, and think about it too much beforehand. Um, it's, it's See, that's emotional. one of my problems sometimes with writing, because I know some sometimes I've, I've written before, not a lot, and uh, I had a few friends say, God, you should write more. And I'm like, oh. but I start to go, and then my mind sort of goes, David, oh, 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 oh. so I, oh. you know, I, rather than the focus. You know, sometimes I focus and just do it. It's like when right. I'm in the moment, it flows, but. Oh, it's hard. What's the next one? Oh, okay. I ha you know, I know that movie, but I've never seen that. Oh, isn't that great? Oh, yeah. My Is God. that John Barry too? That's John Barry too. Wow. Cat uh, Catherine? Yeah, Catherine Hepburn? Catherine Hepburn was amazing 
<laughs> I, I should see that. I think my mom really likes that movie. What kind of spindly, ricket ridden milky, semi-witted, wizen, dim-eyed, gammy-handed, limpy line of things <laughs> will you care? <laughs> we do you to care. <laughs> oh my god a lot of these movies like this one my brother introduced me to and we would every time i would go visit him every time i would go visit him we would watch it and we would say the lines with the movie it was great. oh wow oh cool i have to see it oh my god so good and so many good actors in it yeah the, another one that i've i've never seen but I've, i i know that very well that cover and christopher reeves right yeah so many time it's good oh my god oh my god i got okay i got a oh lot my of work god. To do. i gotta watch these things okay i will everybody at home get your get your rentals out i know and, and then the other one that i t was just so like the gold of collecting back in the day when I was growing up. It, it's not the John Barry, those three were John Barry, but this yeah. one, this was like I had to get and it was so expensive back then and hard to get. And I and you'd I know you're gonna love it too because it, it has one of your favorite people in it. Oh yeah, Cosina Royale, yeah. Burbeck, oh I love, what a great album. Oh my God. And great cover. One of my favorite pe actors was in it, um, Peter Sellers. Yeah, brilliant. Then, of course, Woody Allen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Such a fun movie. <laughs> uh, Peter Sellers was brilliant. <laughs> Isn't that great? Cool. Anyway, I had to share that because you are such a, an incredible composer. And, oh, and, thank you. And I, again, I love watching your show, The, the Alexander you. Tovar Show. <laughs> uh, and, maybe. Uh, and thank you for coming on Meet the Biz. Oh, it's my pleasure. I was, I'm so honored that you asked. I, I, I didn't want you to think you had to feel obligated to. <laughs> thank you so much. I mean. Feel obligated. My God, it's like a joy. It's like oh, an that's honor. So that is so sweet of you.